Thank you, Father. Bless your name for the privilege this morning again to fellowship, to look into your word and to receive of your spirit. Lord, we ask that your word will be made flesh even this morning and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. This morning, I'll be sharing with us. It's almost 9.30 already. I'll share with us briefly for just one hour. And then we'll spend time to pray. Praise God. You know, this is a gathering of eagles. And I told you, it takes empowerment to be an eagle. Being an eagle is not just a, a title or a name. It's a reality we manifest. It's a superlative dimension that we are able to capture and to manifest. And so I told us last night that the first aspect of that reality is obtainable through the instrumentality of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without that enablement of God, it will be impossible to live an exceptional life. There are many forces trying to thwart your existence and undermine the purpose of your being. Life in itself is faced with a lot of oppositions. And then to have forces trying to counter, to counteract, to undermine your existence means you definitely need an empowerment. If you see a piece of land on its own without any input of fertilizer you discover that grasses will grow naturally you don't need to take care of it you don't need to nurture it the grasses will grow on their own you want to plant a flower on the other hand you may need to add manure you may need to add fertilizer and all kinds of things for it to grow that means life is faced with great opposition. What is good is usually opposed because we are in a falling world. Apart from the natural opposition you face, there are also spiritual opposition like demonic entities that want to undermine your existence. This is why you need empowerment. And I told us the subject of empowerment is not something you cannot afford not to understand exactly how it works. If you reduce it to emotions, you will suffer. Reduce it to psychology, you will suffer. So it's something you have to take responsibility, not because of ministry, but because of the quality of life you want to live. When we discuss empowerment, it has nothing to do with ministry. It has everything to do with the quality of life you want to live. Because you will face oppositions, natural oppositions, and demonic oppositions. And I said the first empowerment you will have is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the equalizer for every mortal walking on the face of the earth. The anointing has no regard for gender it has no regard for age it has no regard for natural limitations if you are anointed whether you are young or old male or female it doesn't matter the anointing is the Holy Spirit and the abilities that flow out of the Holy Spirit he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost 
armed with power. And so when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and the attributes of the Holy Ghost begins to flow from you, you may be 15 years old. What you will command, a man of 40 cannot command it. Because that ability is not yours. It is supernatural and it is divine. This is why you must understand how the anointing works. It is the equalizer. It is what makes the difference. It is what balances your limitation and your infirmities and brings the supernatural out of you. And so I said there are three ways of receiving and expressing the anointing. I said number one is through the instrumentality of honor. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, it says to follow them, not those who are old. To follow them, not those who are white. To follow them, not those who are black. He said, but to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. And so we said, if you find a man that carries a dimension of God, if you want to make contact with it, better honor that vessel so that you can receive of it. And we said, in most cases, those who operate those dimensions have worked in it for a long time. And so we summarize it as fathers that have borne those witnesses. If you find them, honor them if you want to make contact with them. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7. He said, without every contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. It is the one who has that is able to give. Jesus himself, the son of God, needed his heavens to open and for the anointing to start working in his life. He was creator. He was God. He was light and he was life. Yet, he went to John the Baptist. The moment he humbled himself before John, instantly the Holy Ghost came upon him. Instantly the Holy Ghost began to lead him. And 40 days later, he will return with the power of the Holy Spirit. I told us the reason many pray, many fast, and they are not anointed is because they dishonor those who carry it or they dishonor those who represent the symbol of the anointing. And so in order not to waste your prayer energy, in order not to waste your resources, in order not to waste your time fasting in vain, in addition to your prayers, fasting and giving, ensure that you don't dishonor the men who are custodians of these realities. And I told us yesterday, this is not an attempt to advance human worship or deification. Because you honor your biological parents, you don't worship them. There's a difference between honor and worship. If you don't understand that difference, then it means you are worshiping your biological parents. So forget the gimmicks of those who want to fight the church, who advance this gimmick of people are worshiping men of God and all of that. That is absolute nonsense. You honor your biological parents, you don't worship them. So why do you think honoring those who are spiritual authority will translate to, to worship? That is hypocrisy and we must kick it out because it will rob us of things that are divine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so I said, in addition to your prayer and fasting, ensure you honor carriers of spiritual possibilities. And I also said, I'm not at advancing human worship and I'm not saying everybody you see lie on the floor. No. I said it must be done by discernment. When you see a man that carries what God has put for you, the Holy Spirit will prompt you. But if you have the culture of dishonor, it will become difficult for you to be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. This is why it's important to imbibe that culture. You remember in Genesis 18, the Bible said Abraham sat at the gate of Mamre and he saw three men walking by. Immediately he rushed. He had not even discerned who they were, but he had the culture of honor. And he rushed to them and said, Sirs, please come in and relieve yourself of stress. It was eventually he discovered that these are not men. This is the living God walking by. This is why the Bible said to be careful to honor men. He said by dishonor, some have rejected angels. And by honor, some have accommodated angels. 
if we allow this nonsense of dishonor become part of us it will shut down our discernment and i said if it shuts down our discernment three things will happen to us number one we will be robbed of inheritance because inheritances are transferred i said number two it will make our generation become a lawless generation because when you say it now you think you are dealing with one pastor who is in error you think you are dealing with two or three pastors who are in error what you don't know is that you are about to create an error that cannot be addressed because when you get a generation to that point of dishonoring those who carry graces or those who are fathers it will become the norm and the time will come you can no longer correct your children we see it happen in the natural go to the west today they said no human rights human rights and they kept advancing human rights you can't correct a child you can't beat a child you can't flog a child today they can't talk to their own children they literally beg their children to do the right thing go to the western world people stand up they say they they, they don't want children abomin abortion is legal they are celebrating the fact that that bee have been upturned will you dare try it in nigeria because there's a culture of honor they thought it was about human right they thought it was about stopping one or two parents that abuse children they didn't know they were creating something they could not manage today people walk naked on the street they talk to somebody and see what will happen a child will arrest the father for trying to stop him or her from entering a relationship and the child will claim he or she knows what is good for, for him you imagine those nonsense but it has become a lawless society this is the same thing they are advancing in the body of christ and they are not aware of i know there are pastors that cross the line i know there are excesses and we don't endorse it but when somebody's wrong let's correct the issue deal with the issue and not try to put down a principle that is eternal raise a lawless generation that have no honor and see if you'll be able to worship god in the next 10 years in the next 15 years in the next 20 years you'll find a generation that is not accountable can you manage the error that will rise some of the things we say we are careful because we know people can call us to order there are many things we don't dare do or say because there are people who can call us to order and then you are pushing for dishonor in a bid to deal with one or two persons it is an error and you cannot use an error to correct an error and so when we advance this honor a generation will not just be robbed of inheritance a lawless generation will rise and number three i said people will be disconnected from spiritual tribes and spiritual genealogies praise god praise god you want to walk in the tangible anointing you must find those you are connected to you must find those god leads you to and you must find those who carry what pertains to your destiny honor them and receive it i'm not talking about this lack of discernment where people are tapping everything again that's not what i'm saying i'm talking about discerning those who carry your blessings and honoring them and receiving it that's what i'm talking about this principle is spiritual god himself takes from people and put in other people god and i shared extensively on this subject yesterday i wouldn't want to repeat myself number two i said to walk god bless you sorry i didn't see you number two i said to walk in the tangible anointing of the holy spirit you must become very yielded to the holy spirit you find a man who is anointed that's a man who is yielded to the holy spirit if you are not yielded to the holy spirit you can't walk in the anointing of the holy spirit it's impossible because this thing is an overflow it's a river the anointing is the person of the holy spirit and what flows out of him if you are not yielded to him it cannot flow through you it's impossible and i told us yesterday even jesus the son of the living god had to be yielded to the holy spirit to walk in the anointing for 30 years there was no record of any supernatural thing happening in the life of jesus until suddenly jesus will tell john suffer it to be so for now thus it becometh us to
to fulfill all righteousness. And the moment Jesus will be baptized of John, the heavens will open, the Holy Ghost will alight upon him, and the supernatural will begin as though it's natural. Immediately, yieldedness was, was portrayed, the anointing began to flow. It does not mean Jesus was rebellious, but the Bible presented it that way to teach us a key that we need to be sensitive to. Because after that baptismal service, he was led of the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted. After that temptation, he returned in the power of the Spirit. Could it be that you are struggling because you have been rebellious to the Holy Spirit? You have seen visions of yourself packing out people in stadia. You have seen visions of yourself baptizing 1,000 people at the same time, blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, and every time the Holy Ghost brings an instruction, you can't keep it. Could it be that it's your disalignment that is making the anointing not to flow through you? I know you have heard stories and you have done a lot of things, but how many things did the Holy Ghost tell you that you have refused to do? The Bible says, quench not the spirit, because you can quench it. And you quench the Holy Spirit when you are reluctant to do the things it demands you to do. The Holy Ghost tells you to go on a fast. You don't go on that fast until when you feel like. When you feel like may not be the Kairos moment. When you feel like may just be the time the Holy Ghost doesn't feel like. The Holy Ghost tells you, stand up and pray. You finish doing everything you are doing before you come to pray. It's not about the prayer. It's about the responsiveness. It's about the obedience. It's about the reverence. These are the things the Holy Ghost is looking for. The most anointed people are not the most prayerful people. I can tell you this. Is prayer important? Yes. But to get certain things done in the spirit, there are kairos moments. And these codes, the wise men of old knew it. The most anointed people are not the most worded people. But I can tell you, the most anointed people are the most obedient people. Obedience, not in that they just do all God tells them to do. They do it when and how God wants it done. When you get yourself to that level of sensitivity and responsiveness, you will become shocked that even things you are not conscious of will begin to happen. When you think things, they begin to happen. When you talk things, they begin to happen. The Holy Ghost will literally begin to surprise you on a daily basis. You will find out that things you say casually, casually, will produce supernatural results and you will be amazed. I went back to the hotel yesterday and I stumbled on the program I had. I did in worry because I was in worry two days ago before coming here. And they had the last session yesterday. And when I stumbled on it, people were giving testimonies. And I was hearing strange. I couldn't take testimonies that night because it was late and I had to take time to teach. And I was hearing strange testimonies from very casual words that I spoke. A woman came up and said when the man of God was preaching yesterday, he just mentioned that ulcers were healed. And she said she's had ulcer for seven years. An ulcer of seven years healed from a very casual utterance. Not because I was shouting, ulcer is being healed now. And seven years ulcer, gone. Somebody said he had a malignant growth. Malignant growth. And with the moment I spoke, the growth vanished. I didn't feel anything. I just gave a commandment. And issues that were standing for years. In fact, the woman said she had to go back and do a test. The one that had the growth. And they did the scan, growth was gone. Not because you are feeling anything. Somebody said they had a malignant just by growth. doing what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. And they did the scan, basis. growth was And gone. the more you are doing it, you just discover that the anointing on your life becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Sometimes you wake up at night tired. Somebody calls you and says there's a challenge. You say, in the name of Jesus, receive intervention. You are not sensing anything. You are not seeing any vision. You are not feeling anything. You just spoke. And suddenly, every word you speak, the Lord begins to command, confirm those words. Why? He said, the Lord confirms the words of his servants and he performs 
the counsels of his messengers. People are looking for mysteries to be anointed. These are the simple mysteries of the anointing. That when the Holy Ghost speaks, you tremble. When the Holy Ghost speaks, you are prompt to respond. I discovered this is why the fathers are very simple yet powerful. Because when the Holy Ghost speaks, they don't take it for granted. A man can save money for three years and is entering his house and suddenly he hears, empty your account. And it's not even to his church. Sometimes to an orphanage. And what is saved for three years with that simple instruction, he empties three years of labor. Does it make sense? They know where the power is that is in yieldedness. We are doing things and acting dramas and we are not seeing anything come out because the Holy Ghost knows we don't trust him. I wish you will understand this thing. I wish you understand it. That this is not just a message. That this is a code of supernatural living. It's not a message. This is why you see people who are not educated. Who never went to Bible school walking in power. And you are asking yourself, how? Some people quote one verse of scripture for 20 years. And with that one verse of scripture, they are raising the dead. Blind eyes are opening. Deaf ears are opening. Some of them are illiterate widows. And you will show up with your Bible school grad certificate. You will show up with your collar and with your bishopric. You will show up with your cassock as a senior reverend. Yet, nothing is happening. And you are wondering, one knows the Holy Spirit personally. And when the Holy Ghost speaks, she responds. She's a widow. She's an illiterate. But she doesn't joke with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Ghost tells her now, stop, she stops. If the Holy Ghost says, stand up, she stands up. Sometimes the Holy Ghost can say, go to the market. And she doesn't know why. She stands up, she goes to the market. She'll go and walk around the market and come back. And the Holy Ghost will not tell her why. The next day, the Holy Ghost will still say, go. And she will still go. In the days when men saw power, they were madmen. We are too elitist, too educated, too civilized to see the raw power of God. If you know this, you will be amazed. Faith will become an experience. Because the Holy Ghost will carry you through the school of faith himself. How many disobedience do you have in your path? How many resistance do you have in your path? You have attended conferences upon conferences. The most anointed of men have laid hands on you. You have sown all the seeds they need to sow. How come you are still dry? This is the secret. The anointing is not so difficult to wrap. But it will take a lot of obedience to find it. A lot of obedience. And as you begin to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you will see how supernatural your life will become. So supernatural. I've met people before whom no man laid hands on. But walking wonders as a lifestyle. I'm a traveler. One day I'm in the palace. The other day I'm in the village. I can be in an, a massive estate in one day. With rooms and everything. Convoys. The next day I can be in one room with three people. Sharing one mattress. I've gone to the top, I've gone to the bottom by the message of God and I've met strange people. I've seen strange people, some of them in the villages that nobody may ever go. They don't even have cameras to record what happened. But you will show up, they will tell you last night, 17 deaf ears opened. And you ask yourself, 7 what? Last night, it's a normal thing, 17 deaf ears. They will hit on their door 1 a.m. Somebody is dead. They will stand up from sleep and command the dead to rise. The dead will rise. They will go back and sleep. And say, come back in the morning. Terrible things. They don't have half the revelations that we have. 
But if the Holy Ghost speaks, if the Holy Ghost speaks, they don't only obey, they tremble. You will find a man sometimes tell you that God told him for the next 14 days he shouldn't go out. And because God said it, all his programs cancelled. And he will sit down for 14 days. And then you are wondering, but all the connections that you should build, goodness and obedience. Where I am with God now, I can do impartation anytime. I can ask God to ordain people. I can ask God to set men on fire. I can pray for things like paralysis. I can pray for things like growth in the body. And they will vanish any day, any time. But my obedience level, I've not reached a level where I can give instructions, certain instructions. For example, I see the blind eyes open. When I'm praying mass in a mass, I can declare and blind eyes open. But it's not something I can do at will. As you grow in obedience, the authority grows. I've seen few people stand up from which here. It's not something I can do at will. I'm still learning to follow the Holy Spirit. Obedience level is still growing. But I know men who can walk to anybody anytime on the wheelchair and say stand up it's no manipulation I can stand now again and tell the Lord that if you have a growth in your body how many people have growth here you have something like a, a lump or a pain somewhere that is like a lump or something I, wanted, I want to show you another practical you have something like that all of you that have that growth just don't try to do anything. Just stay sensitive. I want to pray now. Some of them, the pains will go or the lump will dematerialize. Not because I'm sensing anything. My obedience has come to that level. But this man on the wheelchair, I may need to take time to pray for the spirit of faith to come on me before I'm able to pray for him. But if I continue working with God, a day will come when if I go for a meeting, I can casually raise 10 of them. It's not money. See, it's where your yieldedness level reaches. That's what God can grant. He said, He granted that signs and wonders be done by their hands. It's a granting. I will pray for these people and I'll still ask God to anoint somebody with fire again. And somebody will still be activated. Father, I command everybody with pains and everybody with growth in the body now. In the name of Jesus, please don't be distracted. Stay sensitive. I command those growths to vanish now. I command those growths to vanish now. And I command the pains in their bodies to go now. Every pain in the neck, in the chest, and every form of growth. Right now, I command you, go from their bodies. In the name of Jesus. Pain, go. Growth, dematerialize. Growth, dematerialize. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Can you check again? I'm trying to show you something. People think what we do is uh, emotional psychology. <laughs> there are things that work in this kingdom. If you drop, if you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, you will wonder what it will do to you. 